Hello, Ben from Equine Biogenie here. Um, this is video two, um, and in the last video, I said I would explain uh, about what we can do as part of our biosecurity measures. Now, we have equine facilities that vary hugely. Now, some stables will be individual and small, low ceilings, predominantly wood and dark. That causes problems in in and of itself. Now, ringworm, trichophyton, uh, can live in wood indefinitely. And as I mentioned in the last video, in dark, damp areas, uh, fungi will thrive and you have the risk of the aspergillus spores missing from that. So some equine facilities will require more treatment than others, but we need to be uh, we need to be conscious and cognizant all the time of horses coming and going and uh, how we can how we can consistently as part of a part of a system have a have measures in place now 360 degree biosecurity is important what does that mean that means air surface and water treatments as i mentioned in the previous video EHV and uh, strangles. Strangles can live in water for up to six weeks in the right conditions. EHV can be present in water for three weeks. So uh, lots of people forget about the water and it's really important. Now, water from the mains has an element of, element of chlorine and chemicals in. Horses are very susceptible to the smell and taste of that. Um, we can. There is a way we can neutralise the the taste and smell of that chlorine. There, there's some people have boreholes or wells or have um, automatic water drinkers that are fed from um, from from cisterns and uh, um, units in, in in the roof. Now they can become stagnant, and there can all sorts of issues in the water. So the water is something we need to be we need to be concerned about. Surfaces and uh, general systems of biosecurity. When you're you know on a day to day basis, dipping bits and bridles, for example, um, the horse comes in from a piece of work. Um, you come in, you take the bridle off. What do you do with the bridle? It's been in the horse's mouth. That bridle may go onto another horse. Um, dip the bridle into into an appropriate disinfectant. Uh, when I say appropriate, that's something I'll come on to um, because that's a, a massive area of concern. What you should be using, not for, you know, not only for the safety of your horse, um, yourself, and the and the environment for that matter. Um, a good a good surface treatment on a regular basis. You know, we provide services on a monthly basis to. Um, equine facilities you know all over the place where we we maintain the the level of that that pathogenic load we keep that pathogenic load by treating by treating the stables walkers lorries tack rooms you know you you don't know where those equine pathogens are likely to are like to exist so having something um like spraying spraying down your horse's feed bins you know focusing on um, the the walls of the stables and um, the corners and uh, the the taking the bedding out from the sides and spraying down the corners of the stables where let's not forget um, this is where the horses are spending most of their time now when you're traveling um, you go to a stay away show do not do not put the end of the, you're filling up a bucket, do not put the end of the, the hose in the bucket. Um, you know, do, do you take your bucket and, and, and fill it up from a shared water source? Are you treating your lorry? Uh, are you spraying the lorry down with, with disinfectant before you travel? Uh, make sure your horse is not touching noses with other horses when you, when you arrive at the destination. All these elements are, are really important. So you must think about biosecurity in terms of what is gonna make it, make it as easy as possible for yourself, i.e. have something that you can just spray and leave, making sure it's not harmful to 
the horse yourself or, or the or the environment remember this everything is going to be flushed down the drain and going to end up in the water sources at some point now in the absence of getting your facility tested assume these equine pathogens are going to be going to be there and remember we are we're concerned about bringing down and and suppressing that pathogenic load in the environment so spraying down dipping bridles in uh, or spraying the bridles down after use using using products on your on your boots and on the tack so when they're swapping from horse to horse you're you're preventing any you know ringworm or other or other bacteria getting from one horse to the other putting um putting product in the washing machine um when you're washing your numbers and rugs to prevent the build up of bacteria and ringworm and things like that being being on the on the on the rugs and the tack and and things like that you know all all these elements are really important and don't forget about the airflow the airflow in your in your facility and where the air is coming from if you're you're mucking the stables out when you muck the stables out and you're putting the muck into a trailer or onto a heap where's the prevailing wind is the wind if you've got the if you've got the muck heap upwind of the stables is the wind blowing across the muck heap and then blowing pathogens that are that have that have built up on that muck heap blowing into the stables is that happening make sure it's not these are little things you think about overhanging trees trees hold moisture if you've got trees overhanging the 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 window of your stable you're going to you're going to be holding moisture in the environment and then you're asking for reservoirs of fungi to to build up in that environment so these are just a, a number of things to be conscious of and in the next video uh, i will be explaining why you should be choosing the right products to use around the facility and indeed when you go away.